Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our live service today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. We shall be glad in it. We want to thank you. We want to invite you to our day's service, our day sermon. And kwa wala mbobo labda na tusikiza kupitia kwa radio all over the country. Milele FM na wala mbobo wanasikiza via YouTube, via Facebook, na pia Twitter. We want to welcome you and thank you so much for for such for tuning in on such a day and such a time we love you this is your friend pastor bonfast makanda from gmi glory church ongata rongai uh nairobi kenya we want to know from where you are watching from we want to know who you are testimonies and all that and indeed this is the day we want to celebrate what the lord is doing in our lives and uh today ningependa tujifunze from the first book we are going to use the book of ephesians uh, ephesians chapter Two, Ephesians chapter two. This is one of my favorite verses, and um, I want to use it to speak to us today. And I want to believe that the Lord has something for you. Amen. Amen. I hope you are writing notebooks already. Uh, your pen is ready. Your Bible is ready. This is the day the Lord has made. Regardless of what's going on, Bwana Yesu amejianda leo kubariki maisha yako. This is what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter two, verse six. Biblia inasema kwamba katika Kiingereza kwamba and he raised us up with him and made us to sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Ya kwamba ametufufua pamoja naye na akatusababisha tukae pamoja naye katika ulimwengu wa rohoni pamoja naye. Now I want you to know every child of God listening to me ni kwamba a believer or a child of God born again you live in two worlds at the same time you live in heaven and you also live on earth in other words the physical body in aka hapa duniani but the spiritual body or your spiritual personality lives in the realm of the spirit last week i was the other time i was talking about how to create your spiritual atmosphere and i explained to you that it is where you live in the realm of the spirit that will determine what you attract in the realm of the physical and that it will determine what follows you and that it will also determine what you command in the realm of the physical hallelujah Amen. now i want us to understand that dominion uh, because i'm talking about uh, i'm talking about walking in walking in dominion dominion is the ability to be able to practice one of the five virtues that god gave to adam and eve immediately after he blessed them in the garden of eden amen. amen now in the garden of eden the bible says in the book of genesis chapter 1 verse 28 the bible says the lord said and god blessed them and god said be fruitful multiply replenish the earth subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth in other words God gave the mandate of five virtues upon Adam and number one he said be fruitful in other words God expect that anything we touch with our hands it shall be fruitful number two he said multiply the lord expect us to multiply anything that is laid on our hands chochote ambacho mungu anatupa lazima kiweze kuongezeka number three, replenish the earth to replenish the earth ina maanisha ya kwamba ni kuendelesha kizazi ni kwa mfano wakati nilikuwa sipo babu yangu alikuwepo akiitwa makanda baba yangu akawa anaitwa makanda mimi leo hii naitwa makanda mtoto wangu anaitwa makanda what has happened is that there have been a replenishing of a generation whereby even when i am gone god will never have a time where he misses people who are worshiping him in truth and in spirit Amen. and that is why you are here not for an accident but you are existing for a purpose Amen. and it is that purpose that causes the lord god almighty to bless your life Amen. and one of the virtue that adam was given is called dominion dominion simply means uh, number four. remember number four it means uh, to to subdue to subdue means to take charge to be able to control everything but dominion means to rule over everything dominion has got two greek words number one is dom dom is a place 
Dom is a, a, a jurisdiction or is an environment, it's a place where God has given you to take control or to rule. Everybody has got his own place that the Lord has positioned him to rule. And then you have the mion, which, uh, which, which finished the word dominion, which is, which is about the person. The person. In other words, we have another word which is called kingdom. Kingdom, where you have a king who is supposed to be ruling. And a dawn, which uh, talk, talks of a place that you're supposed to, do, to, to rule, you're supposed to take control. In other words, every place that God has positioned a child of God, it has the treasures, it has the wealth, it has the resources, it has everything you can ever think of or imagine or desire, not only for your survival, but also for your ruling and for your taking control. God never created you for nothing. He created you for a reason, for a purpose to rule, to have control over everything. Now, there are about um, seven types of dominion that I want to introduce you to, to this very moment. Number one, we have what we call delayed dominion. Delayed dominion is whereby the life of a child of God, the life of a minister of the gospel, the life of a believer has been delayed, whereby it's like his life is being dragged behind. It's like you are living a life, but you find yourself like you are late. I know I'm talking to somebody who feels like other people are making it in life, whereas you are late. Child of God, your time is coming, and your time is here, whereby every delayed dominion shall be turned into a good dominion. Amen. Number two, we have what you call diverted dominion. Diverted dominion is whereby you are supposed to be ruling. You are supposed to be a king. You are supposed to be doing something. But everything about you has been diverted. In other words, you are living a life you are not supposed to be living. You are doing other things. There are people who are supposed to be ministers of the gospel today. But today, they have di the enemy has diverted their attention. He has diverted their dominion. They are no longer in their place of assignment, doing exactly what they are supposed to do. Listen, child of God, God is not committed to bless you unless you are in the right place of your assignment. In the place you have missed your assignment, God is not committed to bless you there because you will mess it up there. Hallelujah. Amen. So you, God is not committed to bless you where he has not positioned you. Because he positions you to be able to bless you in that area. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three, we have what you call the exchange dominion. Exchange dominion is exactly like what happened to, to, to Esau and Jacob. This man, Jacob, was not supposed to be the one to be blessed according to how the father thought because the blessing was supposed to be given to the firstborn who was Esau. And you see, the reason why the firstborns were being blessed in the Bible, because according to the Jews tradition, the firstborn was supposed to get double portion, double portion of what belongs to the father. And therefore, this man by the name Esau was expected to get double portion. But there was an exchange an exchange of dominion. There are many people today who are living life that don't belong to them. And that's when we come onto the concept of people stealing people's stars, people using, manipulating your spiritual world, your spiritual person, using you to do a lot of things to inflict other people, using your stars because your destiny or your dominion has been exchanged. But blessed be the name of the Lord Amen. because today we are restoring everything that the enemy has messed up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, we have what you call the closed destiny. There are people operating and living under the heavens that are closed. Nothing is working in them. Nothing is working with them. Nothing is working for them. Their dominion is closed. They don't know what to do. They can't rule anywhere. But today, we are speaking a breakthrough in every area in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Number five, we have what you call a bewitched dominion. This dominion that has been bewitched, meaning you have a dominion, yes, but that life of dominion given to you is encountering so many arrows, so many attacks, so many weakness. The devil is committed to make sure he throw arrows at every dominion given to you. From this side to the other side, from the left to the right to the center, the enemy is shooting arrows 
of witchcraft, arrows of, of, of words, arrows of cursing, and they are making sure that you are not able to fulfill your God-given assignment because you are busy trying to handle what the enemy is doing to you. And it diverts your attention. But we have a God who knows how to break every chain Amen. of bewitchment in Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, we have an attack or a robbed dominion. The Bible talks of a man who was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho. And in the middle of the journey, he fell in the hands of the robbers. They attacked him and they took everything. There are people today, their certificates are lost. Their documents are lost. Somebody tricked them. Somebody went behind. And somebody is benefiting from what is supposed to be benefiting this person. So realize that the dominion has been attacked whereby this person is not living. Somebody is seated on a chair that he is not qualified for. But they forge your documents, they forge something, and they are enjoying exactly what does not belong to them. But today, everything shall be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have the number seven, which is called the divine dominion. Amen. Divine dominion means living in the assignment of the Lord. Amen. Living in the purpose of God. Amen. Fulfilling God-given mandate. Amen. It Amen. means walking in the abundance Amen. of God's provision. Amen. Moving in the direction and the leading of Amen. the Holy Spirit. Amen. Fulfilling exactly the assignment allocated to, allocated to you. By Jehovah God Amen. and enjoying the goodness of the Lord, Hallelujah. living life big and good because the Lord is on your side. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, chapter 23, Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, Amen. I shall not want. Other verses say, I lack nothing. Amen. In other words, you are living in the assignment of the Lord, Amen. and therefore, you lack nothing because when the Lord is your shepherd. Hallelujah. He shall supply all your needs yes. according to his riches in glory Amen. as it is in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. That my God shall supply all your needs yes. according Amen. to his riches in glory. Amen. This is a life whereby you are not living life based on your religion. You are not living life based on, uh, on slavery. You are not living life based on enslavement of men, of title or enslavement of a child. But you have understood the concept of Christ and Jesus. Child of God, I love speaking about Jesus Christ. I love talking about the Holy Spirit. I love talking about the grace. This is whereby God is working and you are resting. But you are enjoying the benefit of believing in Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, whenever God works, you rest. But when you, but when you are working, God is resting. There's no way you're going to encounter the divine doings of the Lord if you are trying to think you have the power or the ability mm. to do. Listen, let me challenge somebody today. Salvation is the greatest miracle and the biggest thing that a man or a woman can ever encounter in life. Amen. You did nothing to receive salvation. Mm. The Bible says, while we were still yet sinners, oh, yeah. Christ died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not when you did anything. So don't tell me because you fasted for three years. That is why you have received this miracle. Don't tell me you have fasted for 21 days. I'm not against fasting and praying. I fast, I pray. But listen to me, child of God. It's a waste of time if you enter into a fast without being led yeah. by the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus after baptism... He was led by the Spirit of the Lord into the wilderness to pray and fast. He did not go for fasting because he wanted. No. He was led. Amen. Now, going without being led, you will never arrive. Amen. Going without being led is carnal. Because we are trying to prove to the people, this is what I did. God did this because I did this. There's nothing like you did this. Listen, there are two. There are religious who are teaching you about salvation by work, but because they are telling you how much efforts you put on, how much you do, will just. But listen to us. While we were still sinners, while we did nothing, Christ died for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the divine dominion, I'm talking about a child of God. Who is making news noiselessly. He's resting in the promises of God. 
but God is working out everything. Check out on the promises of God and the finished work of Christ. You realize, you look at the tenses. Whenever you see what Christ has done, he's talking about the past tense, not what he's going to do. The Lord has done it already. Let me give you a good example, child of God. When the Bible is talking about by the stripes of Jesus Christ, we were healed. You know, Paul, Peter, was an apostle sent to the Jew. But Paul was an apostle sent to the Gentiles. So when Peter was addressing the Jew who was scattered all over the world from Jerusalem because of the persecution of their loyalty and obedience and subscribing to the faith of Jesus Christ, they were scattered all over the world. And they were go they are being punished, they are being tortured, they, are, they, they were undergoing some some suffering in the, even in their health because they were in hostile environment and Peter spoke the word to them and said by the stripes of Jesus Christ you were healed but listen to me child of God for you who are born again the Bible says them that received him he gave them the power to become Amen. the child of God Amen. and the Bible says for them that received him he gave what power to do what to become what did you become you became a new creature second yes. corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 the bible says it has been he that is in christ has become a new creature the all things have passed away behold all things have become new yes. now you who became a new creature what did you receive when you got born again john 3 16 says for all uh, for god so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Now, when you got born again, you received eternal life. Eternal life means life with the beginning, but life that has got no Amen. end. Amen. A man or a woman with eternal life can never ever be killed by sickness and disease. Mm. Not because you are going to be healed, no. When Jesus was whipped, you receive healing in you. Therefore, your body is carrying the healing virtue of yes, the Lord. Absolutely. When we pray, when we declare the healing of the Lord, yes. then it causes our bodies to recover. Yes. You do not just have life. No. You do not just have life. You have eternal life. Yes. Eternal life can never be sick. The devil can shoot an arrow at you, yes. but you can never be sick. Yes. You are healed. You are the healed of the Lord Amen. because you have been raised up together with Christ. Yes. Seated with him in the heavenly places, oh, yes. whereby you don't conquer by where you are, mm. but you by where you are where you are located, yes. but you conquer from your position. Amen. Your position Amen. is that you are the child of God, yes. called by the Lord, Amen. living with the Lord, Amen. ruling together with the Lord. Amen. Therefore, the Bible says, I'm no longer the one living, yes. but Jesus living in me. Amen. Therefore, Amen. Jesus, the hope of glory, if Jesus is living in me. I am in him. When he died, I died with him. When Amen. Jesus was being punished on the cross, it was for my sake. Yes. Therefore, I died together with him. Yes. Now, if I died together with him, I rose again together with him. Now, I'm no longer the one living. Christ Jesus living with me. Amen. Now, if I am living with Christ, what does the Bible say I am? I am a Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is the vine. I am the branch. The vine the vine dies, the branch dies. The, 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 vine the vine lives, but the branch produces. Jesus and me, we are one. So if Jesus is the vine, I am the branch. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is the vine, yeah. I am the branch. I am the Jesus. Yeah. The meaning of the word Christian, it means two things. One, you are Christ because you became a Christian after believing in Jesus Christ. Amen. The Chian means you are, you are demonstrating the life of Christ yes. in you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when Jesus died and I became a Christian, I became a Jesus with small j. Yeah. Because the Bible says in the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 17, As Christ is in heaven, so am I 
here on earth. I rule together with Christ. Amen. I rule together with him. Therefore, and that is why in the Bible, when God created everything he had created, he put man in charge to continue with what was left over. And listen to me, child of God. God has deposited every miracle, everything that can ever be desired of anyone in people. Your miracle is in people. Amen. You are, Everything is in people. Amen. The day you discover the right person in your life, you start encountering the blessings of the Almighty. Amen. The Lord God will not leave heaven to come and do something on earth. It's illegal because this earth was handed over to mankind for dominion, for ruling. Therefore, we are the one, the custodian of God's presence and God's power. Listen, child of God, by your opening your mouth and declaring, this shall be done. By you saying, it shall be done because we are the image of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Therefore, no one was created for nothing. We have been created to demonstrate the kingdom of God in heaven on earth. What is that kingdom? Amen. Dominion. Amen. You have been given the power to demonstrate dominion on earth. To demonstrate dominion over everything. In the air, on the land, and under the sea. I'm here to declare to every child of God listening to me. You have got dominion over sickness. Amen. Dominion over demons. Amen. Dominion over attack of the enemy. Amen. Dominion over curses. Rasa Gabarani. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 13. Chapter 3 verse 13. That Jesus became a curse. To redeem them that were under the curse. That we might receive their doctrine as That's Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. The Bible says that Jesus was born of a woman under the law to redeem us who are born under the law that we might become the sons of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are living under dominion, meaning we are demonstrating the power of God on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you walk in dominion? How do you walk in dominion? That's the question everybody is asking me. Pastor, how do I walk in dominion? Listen to me. If you are not walking in dominion, you are walking in slavery. If you are not walking in dominion, you are walking in slavery. If you are not under the control of the Holy Spirit, you are under the control of the flesh and the world. Every believer is supposed to walk under dominion. No one has got the authority to control, to manipulate your life unless it's with the word of God. No word of God has given anybody the mandate to manipulate, to modulate, to cause you. Live the way they want. You are a product of grace. Amen. And therefore the grace shall preserve you. The grace shall protect you. The grace shall keep Amen. you. How do you walk in dominion? Number one, change your mindset. Nothing ever happens to any human being until his mind is changed. Mm -hmm. The book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible said that be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Now, the renewal of your mind and change of mindset does not happen once. It happens daily. It happens daily. In other words, a Christian means you are saved. You are being saved. You will be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are saved. You are being saved. You will be saved. When you got born again, when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your spirit got born again. But now on daily, your soul keeps, keeps being saved by the renewal of your mind and by the information you keep on receiving. Amen. But your body will be saved on the last day in heaven. Amen. Nobody should lie to you that your body can be saved here on earth. Your body can be delivered from destruction, from, 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 from pain, from sickness, but cannot be saved. Salvation of the body shall be done on the last day when it shall be transformed and our body shall be renewed and shall have a transformed body whereby you can pass through the world or anywhere. You shall have the glorified body ruling together the Christ. It shall happen because you shall go to, to, to receive Christ in the, in the cloud. Then we come together with him. We shall be transformed with a twinkling of, of an eye. Our body shall be transformed. Therefore, listen, child of God, the meaning of the word repentance. I've seen people preaching these things, speaking this thing everywhere, on radio, on TV, everywhere. People saying, repent, 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 repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. For the kingdom of God is coming. What is repent? Listen to me, child of God. Let me tell you today the meaning of the word repent. 
From the Greek word repent means matonaya. Matonaya means change of mindset. Change of mindset. It means a U turn. If you are going this way, you turn as a going this way. Listen, child of God, repentance is not an activity, an action of the mouth. It is a condition taken by the heart. It's a condition of the heart. It's a condition that has been programmed because your mind has been programmed by the renewal, by the renewal. When your mind is renewed, it programs your mind. You make a U-turn. It's useless to tell God, forgive me, but you're still doing the same thing you are doing. Repentance means you make a U-turn. If you are going this direction, you change to another direction. Why are you changing from this direction to this direction? It is because your mind has been changed. Your mind has been turned. Listen, child of God. God, if I put dirty water on the floor, I force you to sit in that dirty water. If you are not agreeing with me, you will refuse to sit in the water. But if I force you, or maybe I take a gun, you will be forced to sit in that water. But in you, you are still standing because you don't want to sit in that water. It's only your body that will be seated. Now, if your heart does not change, Listen, child of God, the confession of the mouth is simple hypocrisy and a lie to the public. Conf repent repentance starts with the change of mind. Amen. Amen. Every child of God born again, you are holy. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I know this is where somebody lied to you. He told you that, oh, we have all sinned. We have all sinned. That scripture that talks about all have sinned. Read it clearly. Read up to verse 24. It is talking about the believers. Paul was addressing the Pharisees who are not accepting Christ. Everybody born again, you are holy. You are righteous. Amen. You are holy and you are righteous. Yes. Every born again is holy and righteous. Amen. Now listen, you did nothing to become a sinner. You are a sinner because you are born a sinner. Because when Adam sinned, you existed in Adam. The same way the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5, as sin entered the world through one man, Adam, so, mm -hmm. so, yeah. our salvation, yes. Yes. our grace, yes. Yes. our righteousness yes. entered to us as yes. well through one person, yes. Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Therefore, therefore you, be, you, you are a believer, you are holy, not because of what you did, no. You are holy for one reason, that you believe in Jesus Christ. Yes. Because Jesus is the righteousness of God. Amen. Jesus is the express image of God. Yes. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. In other words, Amen. Jesus is God Almighty in the flesh. And therefore, anybody who believes in God the righteous, listen to me, a spirit gives birth to spirit. Mm. Flesh gives birth to flesh. Now, the flesh which is Adam gave birth to you, flesh, and you are a sinner. But when you get born again, your spirit was delivered, was given birth by another spirit of Jesus Christ. Therefore, you are righteous. When God looks at you, he cannot see you direct. He has to see you through the, in the mirror of Jesus Christ. Mm. And by seeing you through the mirror of Jesus Christ, who is the advocate, the firstborn of all creatures, the son of God, the God himself, the righteousness of God, the loving God. Listen, listen to me. You know, somebody was trying to challenge me, telling me, Pastor, are you telling me we do away with the law? We do away with the uh, we do away with the, the things of the Old Testament. No, I'm not saying you do away with the law. There's a difference between the, the New Test the Old Testament scripture and the Old Covenant. The Old Testament scripture and the Old Covenant are not the same. The Old Covenant, these are the actions of the law. But the New Testament, the Old Testament scripture, these are the written word of God from the Old Testament that needs to be applied here. Now, you are telling me, oh, we have prophets, we have this. Listen to each other of God. Before Jesus died, he went to the Mount of Olives to pray. And in that night, the Bible said there was a transfiguration. And in the transfiguration, three people were there. One, Moses was there. Two, Jesus was there. Three, Elijah was there. Right? Now, why were they there? And the disciples were watching all that was happening. Look at this child of God. Look at this child of God. And while they were all standing there, 
the Moses who appeared there represented the law. But Elijah represented the prophets. Amen. But Jesus represented grace and love Amen. and truth. Amen. Grace, love and truth. Now listen to what happened. When Peter saw it, he did not understand. He thought that these guys need to be here. They need to stay here. Let us build a tent for them so that they can stay here. But a voice came from heaven and the voice said, This is my only begotten son in whom I am well pleased. Listen ye to him. <laughs> Listen ye to him. What does that mean? The Bible was simply meaning the, 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 the law came with Moses. His time is over. The prophet, the prophecy that came through Elijah, therefore prophecy is over. But now listen ye to him. Who is him? Grace, truth, and love. Amen. Therefore, we rise up with Christ Jesus. Now, Jesus did not come to destroy the law. People are saying then, are you telling us that Jesus came to Jesus himself saying, I did not come to abolish the law. What did Jesus do? Jesus came to fulfill the law. Amen. Whereby what you are supposed to do, Jesus did what? Did it. <laughs> now, the Bible says that every soul that sins shall do what? Shall die. Therefore means, for every sin you commit, you are supposed to pay for it. You are supposed to suffer for it. You are supposed to go through it all. Right? But listen to me, child of God. God punished your suffering on the body of Jesus on the cross. And say, it is finished. Amen. Therefore, God cannot punish the same mistake twice. Mm -hmm. Somebody Amen. is saying that, Pastor, are you trying to encourage her to Amen. sin or to tell? No. How can Romans 6, what does it say? How can we who are born in the spirit, who are saved, live in sin anymore? No, God forbid, we have been justified by faith. Amen. We are righteous yes. of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, listen, child of God, you are be a believer. You are born again, spirit filled, encountering the blessing of God. Why? Yes. Because when God, when, when you are evil, God punished your sin on Jesus. Yes. And because he punished your sin and your mistake on Jesus, he cannot do it twice. If you do it twice, it means the work and the death of Jesus Christ has got no importance, has got no value, is uh, irrelevant, but it is of value. Why? Because your sins were punished on the body of Jesus Christ. Yes. Therefore, you are free, not because of what you can do, because a man's activity and actions, they are not good and perfect enough to justify yourself. Amen. Child of God, listening to me, you are the righteousness of God. Yes. You are the royal priesthood. Yes. You are the chosen generation. Yes. The Bible says, be ye holy, because God is holy. Yes. Now, the opposite of holiness is common. The opposite of holiness is common. So mean you are either holy or uncommon. But for you who are born again, the Bible says in the book of First Peter chapter 2 verse 9, but we are a royal priesthood. Yes. We are a chosen generation. Amen. We are a peculiar people. Amen. We are holy. Yes. People of God. Yes. Peculiar means unique. Yes. Peculiar yes. means people of his own kind. Yes. People who have never been there before. Amen. Chosen. Called out of darkness and ushered into Amen. the marvelous yes. light of Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Therefore, whenever you speak before the Lord, yes. you need to stand still. Amen. Be strong. Know yes. well, very well. Amen. I have the heavenly backup yes. because he that is in me Amen. is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be ye transformed by renew of your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Yes. Do not live a life of superficial Amen. custom. Do not be fashioned after. Do not be after the uh, do not adapt the external behavior. Do not be ye transformed to the pattern of this world. Amen. Be ye changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Amen. Be transformed. Be renewed. Hallelujah. Be renewed. Be transformed. Be transformed. Listen, child of God. If you are not the, the greatest demon in the life of a person is wrong doctrine. 
that is the greatest demon ever. If you can manage to remove a wrong doctrine from a person, you have set the person free. Amen. Because it's the truth that you know that will set you free. Amen. But why are people still suffering? We are giving them wrong doctrine and enslaving them and making people slaves of religion, slaves of preachers, and slaves of the people. We need to, people, to give people Christ. Listen, I'm sorry if this will offend you, but listen to me. Any gospel that Jesus has been withdrawn, it is heresy, it is wrong, it's another gospel, and it is from the devil. The gospel is not the gospel until Jesus is the center of that gospel. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the reason. Nobody with a title ever died for your sake. Nobody died for your salvation. Only Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Only Jesus. So be transformed. The Bible says, and you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. Amen. You know what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter, 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 chapter 23, verse 7? The Bible says, As a man thinketh in his heart, not just thinking, you know, you know what the Bible is saying? As a man thinks in his heart, meaning you can think with your mind and you can think with your heart as well. Mm. Right? Yeah. Now, therefore, the Bible is talking about what? As a man thinks in his heart, so he is. So when your mind is renewed, then your heart is definitely going to think right. Yes. If you think you are a cockroach, yes. you are a cockroach. Yes. Yes. If you think you are a... You remember the Bible, what the Bible talks about in the book of Numbers? The, the ten men who went to spy the land of Canaan. They came back and said, hey, we look like grasshoppers. Yes. And so they saw us. This guy was spies. They were hiding. Nobody was seeing them. That's why the prostitute was hiding them. But they say, we saw ourselves. We saw ourselves mm -hmm. as grasshopper. Mm -hmm. Who told you a grasshopper? They saw themselves and so they were. Amen. And so they were. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, child of God, every time you have a mind that is not transformed, is not renewed, is not programmed correctly, with the Lord, you realize you encounter a life of struggle. Why? Because it is by the renewal of our mind, our heart, and attitude Hallelujah. that changes a man. Amen. Now, if somebody tells you I have changed, but their mind, their heart, and their attitude is not changed, Amen. then it's a lie. This person is likely to go back to the other form of life. If you want to change a man, change their doctrine. Amen. Change their belief, Amen. change their information, Amen. and that's why when you read the Bible, every time anybody was changed, anybody was converted, Amen. what happened? The first thing that the disciples of Jesus Christ did, the apostles did, they banned their literature, they banned their their informational books, Amen. they banned their their doctrinal books because doctrine, doctrine stands for belief. Amen. Belief stands for a system, Amen. a system. Stands for your life. Amen. If you believe wrong, you will live wrong. Amen. If you believe right, you will live right. Amen. It's by receiving, hearing the right gospel Amen. that will program your heart. Amen. You know, you are what you feed your spirit man. Amen. Your spirit man eats. You are a product of what you are feeding your spirit man. Amen. If you feed your spirit man wrong things, you're simply feeding your spirit man poison. Mm. You will eventually die. Feed your spirit the right word. Feed your spirit the right concept. Not just a message because it fits you or is sweet or looks suitable or sweeter to you. Let this be the word. Listen, child of God, I don't read the Bible to get a message to preach. I read the Bible for my personal growth. And for my personal encounter with God's love. Amen. And as I read the word of God, it's what I receive that I'm able to give out. The Bible is out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaketh. So what people are speaking and giving out is exactly what they are carrying. Amen. There are people who are giving people the law. You went through the law. You suffered the law. It was about do's, do's, do's and don'ts. You have do's, do's and don'ts. But even themselves are not able to keep. Listen, even Moses who came with the Ten Commandments, he did not keep them. In fact, he broke them all before he arrived where the people were. The work of the law is to expose sin and to punish you for the same sin. 
But the work of grace is to reveal God's love and reveal you to God's abundance love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The, work of, the work of grace, the gospel of grace is to reveal God's love. But the gospel of the law is to make you a slave of a religion or of a preacher. That's true. That's why this gospel of the law they will tell you, don't do this, do, don't do this, don't do this. And then at the end of the day, they ask, they tell you, for this to happen, seed, money, whatever, all these things are emptying Christ from the church. Amen. We are being left with a church of people we call followers and not disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. And therefore, we are endangering the body of Christ, that when Christ comes to pick his church, he will find that because about Jesus coming for a spotless church, a holy Amen. church. How Amen. does a church become holy? A church become holy because it's a church of righteousness, a church that has the Bible says, What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So, how do you live a life of dominion? Change your mindset. Amen. Amen. If you believe. You are blessed. Even before I pray, you are already blessed. Amen. If you believe you are defeated, Amen. then that's who you are. No one will call you more than you are calling yourself. Yeah. Because as you think in your heart, that's who you are. Yeah. That's what you are. Yeah. Even in business, even the difference between poor people and rich people is how they think mm. and how they believe yeah. and how their program there has to be. Yeah. Amen. 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 The difference between people who are failing and who are succeeding is in their mindset. Sometimes people think they, because their people's mind is blocked, people think they are tied, whereas they have been open. If you tie a donkey in some in a place for so long, every day you bring that donkey, you tie it there, you leave. The next time you come and you leave that donkey there, the donkey will not move. Why? The donkey believes it's tied. So in actually it is tied. But what is tied? It is the mind that is tied. So we have been used to wrong concept until we think we are tied. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 119, verse 130. The entrance of the word of God brings light. Hallelujah. And it brings understanding to the simple. Oh, yes. That's why I'm bringing to you light of the word of God. Amen. Receive the light of the gospel. Amen. Number two, you must know your source. You never have dominion until you know your source. The Bible says in the book of James chapter 1 verse 17 that every good and every perfect gift come from above. All things that you need, the best ones, only come from above. Promotion does not come from the west, east, south, or north. No. Promotion comes from the Lord, yes. the maker of the heavens and the earth. Yes. So make sure you know that your source comes from above. Amen. Your boss might be paying you well, but until... God Almighty convinces his heart. He cannot pay you. Haven't you heard people who have been working and no one is paying them? It's because the Lord has not compelled their heart. So your promotion, your blessing, child of God, it comes from above. Amen. You must know your source. Your source is not from your place of work. Yes. Your source is not from your company. Yes. Your source is not from your bosses. Yes. Your source is not from anywhere, anywhere else. Yes. Your source is from above. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Number three. Because you know, you know one thing. When you start believing that your source is from above, you start controlling because you stop living under the jurisdiction and the control of men. You start living a life of liberty in Christ, knowing very well, my source, my redeemer, liveth, and he is alive. He shall surely come forth for me. Number three, you must understand how you are designed to function. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, the Bible says, God created them, God blessed them, and he created them to do what? To be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish, to subdue, and to have dominion. People are trying. If you are a beggar here, you go there, you still fit. with your weakness, you are fit for your functionality. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I want to speak this word to you today. Don't try to make yourself look like somebody else who you are not. The way you are is exactly the way you have been created to function. Amen. 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 Even with your hate, God understood. There are things that need only short people to do. Okay. And he created you that way. Mm. Don't say, oh, me, I'm so tall. God understood there are places where my only tall people need to be there. 
Mimi nasema oh maybe mimi sio mimi ni mwembamba no with your weakness you have been designed Hallelujah. effectively to function in your area start doing that in your weakness Amen. the strength of the lord shall be revealed Amen. oh la ma sekem somebody saying me pastor mimi sijasoma sienda shule who is asking you about your education anyway What does education has to do with God's ability to for you to function? Mm. Function the way you are. Yes. Your lack of education has nothing to do Amen. with what God has told you to do. Yes. Peter was not educated and that's what people say. These guys are not educated. But with this knowledge they must have been with the Lord. And you see with the 12 people the gospel has spread the whole world from people who are not learned like Peter. Other people are learned but Peter was not learned. Child of God, I want to challenge you today. Stop looking at yourself as a pro- as a cockroach. Stop looking at yourself as somebody who is defeated. You are created in the image of God right to function. Amen. The way God has created you. Amen. In fact, by the way, there are no two people like you. If they are, God will kill one so that one can fulfill the destiny of the other. We can never have two people looking the same. Only one exists. And that's why your fingerprint doesn't look like your your friend's fingerprint. You are unique. Love yourself. Hey, listen. Nobody will put value on you and will love you. Love yourself. Amen. Put a level and a standard on yourself and let people also submit to the same mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you today uh, for tuning in. Uh, God keep you. I pray that the life of Christ will be revealed in you mm. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you everybody. Hallelujah. Amen.